Hello and welcome back to this series looking at uh, models that I've either finished building from a, a kit or where I've designed the kit. Um, today we're looking at another tiny little 4mm uh, to the scale, 9mm uh, gauge, so 009 uh, model. Um, it's from a kit by Narrow Planet, um, actually designed by Stuart Brewer. Um, it's for a Bagley McEwen Pratt um, diesel loco. Uh, it's 10 horsepower, it's a tiny little thing. Um, they were built for the war department. Um, they wanted to use them kind of on possible track quite close to the to the front, so they had to be kind of tiny and lightweight. Um, they met the description, but they weren't particularly um, successful in use. Um, but over 50 of them um, were built, and some of them were then used um, after the war, and I think a couple still exist in, in preservation. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, um, again, as you can tell, it's tiny. I have this thing for building uh, models of tiny little locos, but this, as I said, this was a, a kit uh, designed by, by somebody else. Um, and it's it's interesting, again, it, um, it uses um, a chassis taken from um, something else. This, this wasn't designed specifically uh, for this kit. It's a, a tiny chassis, I believe, um, again, an N-gauge. Uh, chassis so designed for two millimeter to the foot locos it's a tiny little Japanese uh, thing I believe um, I'll put the links in the um, in the in the description I don't, I'm not sure whether it's actually still available but I'll put also put up on the screen a, a picture of the um, of the drawing that comes with um, the chassis when you buy it that shows the, the the main dimensions and just how tiny this thing is uh, I mean, you probably get some idea from from me holding the model, but um, it really, really is very, very small. Um, one of the problems with it being very, very small is that the motor that it comes with is only rated for four and a half volts, um, and you have to remember that um, the the track power we use for usually in this country for for model railways is a lot higher than that. Usually, at least kind of twelve volts. Um, so. Um, there was quite a bit of kind of work had to be done to the tiny chassis before before it could be used so um usually when you have such a tiny a tiny little motor uh like this you can add a resistor um to, to drop the voltage uh, but in this case it's actually ha it's actually been remotored i've actually taken out the original uh 4.5 motor uh, and added a 12 volt uh motor again i'll give details of the of the motor i used in the in the in the description but I'll put up on the screen uh, two photos, photos kind of showing the before and the after uh, of the remotoring. The 12 volt motor is a bit longer but the kit was specifically designed uh, with that in mind so that it still it still fits around that longer longer motor. Essentially the motor now comes quite a long way kind of this to this end of the of the chassis because um, as you can just about see in the bottom the worm gear hides kind of in the bottom of the of the well cab area I suppose um driving the driving the, the, the model. Um it drives the rear wheel and then obviously the rear wheel um is all all the other wheels drive um gears all back along the, the chassis. Um so yeah so there was quite a bit of um, so I had to kind of take the motor out and re redo it take the gear off uh refit everything. Um and amazingly um it did still run um after all that work, taking it apart with these tiny things, I'm always a bit worried, especially then soldering things back together that I'm going to mess up like plastic gears and stuff. Uh, but I'll put up, a, there's a little video, I'll put a clip up um, showing that it did run backwards and forwards along the track. Um, although I did spot that one of the, the wheels um, is on a kind of stub axle and it was ever so slightly bent, so I had to kind of bend that back um, to try and get it to run, run satisfactorily. Um, but there's also with the chassis, um, a bit of a design fault. Um, it's not really diff not really possible to see now, especially because I've kind of worked on it a little bit. But um, again, um, the gears down the middle of this thing are actually ever so slightly bigger. So you can't really see it on these. They're ever so slightly bigger than the actual wheels, than the tread of the wheels, which means if you've got plain track, sorry, the, the figure's falling out with my hands. Um, if you've got plain track, um, it's fine, the gear just kind of goes down between the two rails. But as soon as you have any track that has points on it, um, when you try and run the loco over the points, the gear hits the 
hits the points and the loco derails. Um, I've got a, a picture that I took when I was trying to fix the, the problem um, on a piece of multi-gauge test track which shows that it kind of it actually will actually lift the loco and twist the loco. Um, so again I'll, I'll try and put that up. So the, the solution before it was um, put into the kit was I had it upside down, um, power applied so all the gears were turning and I had a file literally running across to take the top off the teeth um, to the point where the teeth will still engage with the gear next to it but the 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 height is such that it's lower um, and I think I've got it about right it's difficult to tell I don't have enough test track in, in um, really to to have a really good idea of how well that works but again I'll, I'll put a picture up and you can see the the weird modification um, but yeah after all that the chassis does kind of work or did kind of work um, I'm gonna have to I'll take the figure out he was glued in I'm obviously um, gonna have to glue him back in anyway um, but the kit itself um, was was really nice. Um, so it's a mixture of um, etched metal parts, so things like the, the foot plate kind of folds down at both ends to fit over the, the chassis block. Uh, there's a 3D printed, tiny 3D printed insert of this end to lengthen the chassis um, to fit the, to match the loco. Uh, you can kind of see where it joins here. Um, but then this this kind of um, cylindrical piece and central front piece here is a is a lost wax casting and you can see just how lovely the mold how crisp the mold is for this obviously this was a new kit it was from the, the this one came from the first the first run so the molds were really really fresh um it's some of the nicest white metal castings i've seen the detail is just it's just lovely um and it was it was it was pretty easy to um to put together um i had a few issues mostly my my stupidity of not following the instructions in the right order um i did have one problem with that these sandboxes if you fit them where they're supposed to be they overhang uh the inside of the chassis and there wasn't actually enough room to get the chassis back in um i'm not quite sure whether that was a, an issue with the sizing position of the hole uh when i mentioned it to stuart he was a bit surprised that it hadn't it hadn't fitted uh, but it's easy to do you can just kind of take a file up the inside of the of the sandboxes um, just to thin them out and it's not really obvious once you've put it together. Um, you also have to be careful about the fact that the chassis obviously has these, you can kind of see they're very highly reflective, these sides are metal and they're actually the pickups as well as the kind of chassis sides. Um, so you have to be careful that it doesn't short out uh, against the metal chassis so there's quite a lot of paint um well not just paint but I've, I've made sure obviously it was all well painted uh, and lacquered as well so that where these things touch they don't tend to they don't short out um, you also have to be careful you can just about see here this is just down here between the sandbox and the, the kind of front of the cab is um it's one of the um uh is where the solder tag to attach the motor to the chassis is um so again that's uh you have to be careful not to not to short the things out um, once assembled and painted, as I say, um, yeah, it's nice. It's it's different, I think, compared with all the other models I built, especially with this kind of um, rod-driven design here, uh, with just two wheels and this this rod and fly crank. It it looks really different. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't run particularly well. As I say, it did run when before I tried fitting the the body to the chassis, but I think with a a lot of kind of um, with it being so small and I had the chassis in and out quite a few times and the issue of the wheel um, stub axle being bent and I think I've just made the chassis worse over time so it doesn't I mean it does run but it needs quite a bit of power to run which means it's suddenly it doesn't move and then all of a sudden it's off like a shot um, so I think rather than using it in anger on, on anything what I'll probably do is build a, a small little um, diorama for it to go on um, I haven't done much in the way of, uh, of scenic modeling really uh, I've focused more on kind of rolling stock um, I did do one previous end gauge layout and one um, one um, four millimeter scale diorama uh, the diorama I may actually talk about in a, in a, in a future video we'll see um, but yeah not huge amounts of um, scenery um, modeling experience so I might build up might model a little diorama for it in fact um, I went to the National Railway Museum in York a few years ago to their um, their archive um, and while leafing through a box uh, looking for something completely unrelated I actually came across photos of 
um, one of these locos at work in a rather unusual uh, place um, so I took some copies of those photos um, and they may actually form the basis of a of a diorama I won't give away too many too many spoilers now uh, because then when I do the diorama I can I can talk about it in more detail but I think that's the that's the plan um, obviously the, the figure was was adapted slightly he's had toes cut off so that he can actually stand in here put his hand on this cab side hand on the wheel uh, but not have his feet foul the foul the the, um, the worm gear. It's what actually happened the first time I, I tried to stick him in, and um, hadn't realised he was going to foul, foul the, the the worm gear. So I put it on the track, and it didn't move at all. Um, which is to say, it probably doesn't help its movement now. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. Uh, another another little tiny little loco uh, from another another narrow planet kit. Um, as I say, I'll, I'll put the link to the kit in the in the description. It's currently. Uh, out of stock but um, as with most of the narrow planet kits you can leave a an expression of interest on the page and um, if there's enough then there might be a, another batch in future uh, but there we go